Right. Well, hello, everyone. Um, this is Robin Thomas with Living Well Connections. I founded Living Well Connections in order to bring people together who are interested in holistic health and who want to improve their overall health and well being. At Living Well Connections, we educate, nurture, and support each other. And members are very welcome to share educational information on holistic health, ask questions, and share educational events that would be a to our group. It's free to join, so just head over to livingwellconnections.info and sign up, and we'd love to have you join us if you're not already in our group. Today, I'm thrilled to welcome Mary Elaine Petrucci, who is here as our featured practitioner this week. Uh, we are going to be talking an awful lot about bringing transformation to our lives and healing stressed and overwhelmed healthcare professionals, coaches, family caregivers, holistic practitioners. These are all, you are all caregivers here. And one of the things we need to do important is to take care of ourselves too. So Mary Elaine is going to help us with that. Um, she has a wonderful experience, long years of experience. Well, I hate to say that, long years of experience, but we do. We both we both have that. Um, she loves to transform your life for legacy and mission to change the trajectory of your family, career, and relationships with the world. She has uncompromising integrity, and she leads successful and motivated entrepreneurs and healthcare professionals into life-changing transformations in confidence, authenticity and empowerment. So welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you, Robin. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm excited about talking with your Living Well group. Yeah, we will be um, we will be sharing all kinds of information this week in the group. And uh, one of the things I wanted to find out about from you, is you have a thing you like to say from ashes, from the ashes to spread your light, value and compassion in the world. Mm -hmm. That I think about that coming from the ashes. And you even named, you named your business Phoenix Rising Life Institute. Can you tell me a little bit about the background in your life that had you want to rise from the ashes? I mean, what has happened in your life, we all have things that happen in our life, and most of us who are in holistic health absolutely have a personal story. Can you share your personal story with us today? Definitely. Well, my story started when my brother passed away at 15. It was um, an accidental um, death, and I felt like at that point that I just wasn't really complete anymore. I felt that I wanted to be like my brother. And when I was doing that, I found that friends would tell me um, that to stop, basically, and to really look at my life more effectively. Many years later, I lost a friend, a really good friend, um, who left a two-year-old and a four-year-old. And she was both my brother and Amy were both very compassionate, really wanted to help others. And I just felt at that point that I had to shut myself down. I didn't want to get hurt again. I didn't want to suffer another loss or get hurt in some way. So I was really living my life on the sidelines and I tried many different things, um, found that they were going to be a second full-time job. And I, I had to make a decision about making a, a, a life for myself financially and or doing all of this internal work. It wasn't until recently that I uh, became familiar with neuro-linguistic programming and hypnosis. So I have 
done all the classes and programs so that I'm now um, a certified institute head and trainer for neurolinguistic programming and hypnosis. So when I mean rising from the ashes, it's really getting out of this really stuck existence, um, not really showing who I am, not showing up fully for people, and just coming out of those ashes to really reclaim myself so that I can be more present for people and help people in my similar situation to rise and have a voice so that they can be heard. That is so powerful. That is so powerful. Yeah, Thanks. tragedy. Tragedy brings out, I mean, you know, with tragedy, we often want to just go hide under the covers. <laughs> You do. Or, or be, you know, be on the wall of life, you know, be, be on the side and, and mm -hmm. watching, but yes, but the, you know, those of us who are able to, and now with your guidance, you're able to help others come forward and live their own true authentic life. Yes. That's fabulous. That's fabulous. Tell me when someone, when someone goes to you, um, what is the first thing what is, you know, if they go to you, and I know that you also teach this. So you're teaching professionals, you're teaching practitioners this also. So they're, of course, getting very interested in and want to know more. But what if someone comes to you in pain, um, you know, is realizing that they're not really li living their own true life? What is the first thing that you do with them? Do you have something we do when you speak with them? What's the very first thing you do? Um, yes, I do um, a discovery call with them to see where they're really at, what kind of pain that they've been through, what other modalities they have tried, and suggest to them different ways they could begin to heal with me as their guide. So it can start from just cleaning up some negative emotions, limiting decisions, it could also be um, doing some anchoring so that they can have a resource to use when they're feeling stuck in that old life again, or they can move into um, a program where they can, or programs where they can also do some work on voice. So I'm a speech language pathologist by training, so I would be using some of the voice training that I've received in my master's program and I would be also using some of the stage mastery program voice program that I learned in trainers training last year so those programs I, I you know I'm feeling a real good connection here because some of those programs the voice training um mm -hmm. also is part of feeling good about yourself like speak, you know, speakers, if you're, you know, could talk to someone who's teaching, speaking, um, giving, you know, giving programs. And if they are feeling uncertain about themselves and, you know, just not feeling quite right about where they stand and what they go, having, mm -hmm. get, get, getting those talents, get, well, getting those instructions on how to project, how to yes. how do that. I can see that that would empower people. Well, yes, because I'm giving them a voice. I, I was giving voice to children and adults as a speech language pathologist, and I'm now giving voice to those that um, haven't been heard or have chosen now, not to I, be heard. You know, yeah, that's so. that's fabulous, and I don't think I picked up on that. So that's that's great. How you you know you you're using some of the education programs and things you've done in the past, yes. work with the past and incorporating them into what you do now that makes you unique. You know, that makes you unique on how you're doing that. Um, I, it's, it's interesting. So you have a, a neuro linguist, neuro linguistic program, right? Yes. I am not very familiar with that. And I know we'll be talking about that more um, later through the week, but could you give a, a very brief um, override about what that's all about? Certainly. Um, 
in a nutshell, it's neuro-linguistic programming is really um, the excellence of communication. So you're learning a lot of different techniques so that you can be understood um, more completely because we're bombarded with about 128 million bits of information every second. So all that information goes through some filters in our brain so that we either delete, distort, or that we generalize. So then we come out with about 138 bits of information that we can actually focus in on. And depending about how our filters work and our values and our beliefs will really determine how we say things. So for example, you make me crazy. Well, why does somebody make you feel crazy? You need some more additional information to really respond appropriately to that person. So that's what um, we have to do is go through the generalizations, the distortions and the deletions so that we can figure out more specifically how people or what people are trying to tell us. Instead and of talking we, in different directions, you're, yes. you're really communicating. Yes. And it's also using um, the person's representational system. So for example, you may say, um, I see opportunity in this position B. And I may say, I may feel like that may not be a good opportunity for you. You're saying I see, which is visual, and I'm saying I hear, which is auditory. So I'm not really, we're not really connecting very well. Mm -hmm. So in order to respond to your comment, I see the opportunity in this. I would in turn have to say, I see that your point of view and why that would be important. Mm -hmm. So I'm communicating better with you because I'm using your language. And now yeah. we can develop more rapport. And you yes. can use that anywhere. You can use it in sales. You can use it in conversations with prospective buyers or, and, you know, it just, it just opens up a whole new way to really communicate and be more authentic and genuine, not only with yourself, but with the people around yeah. you. But really, but, but really paying attention to how they're speaking. Yes. And, and understand in off, uh, this is the way people learn too, in different ways. Mm -hmm. Some are auditory learners and some are visual. Correct. I'm a visual learner. So I think I probably use those words C. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yeah, that's great. That's great. It, well, thank you. I, think, I, I really hope we delve a little bit more into this too. Um, I want to move on to, you know, you have a lot of wonderful tools in your toolbox. Um, you also have hypnosis in your toolbox. Yes. Now, did that come later? Is that the... Is that uh, something uh, um, you decided to add later, or is that something that you found maybe help for you, helpful for you? Um, That's a great question. When you start the practitioner course, you are learning some hypnosis. Um, and then when you become a master practitioner, you learn more of the techniques, hypnosis techniques as well as the neuro-linguistic programming techniques so then you can start working with clients who have like medical conditions for example with um the you know a physician's order uh the hypnosis you can use in several ways you can do um i can train people on either higher self-hypnosis self-hypnosis which i've been training and a two and a half day certification course where the practitioner, whether you're a coach as and wanted as an add-on, you can use this two and a half day certification course 
booked for self-improvement, smoking cessation, weight optimization, and pain with a doctor's order. And after you take the open book test, I can submit your test to the American Board of Hypnotherapy, and then you can be designated and certified in 42 countries. Wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. That's, that's wonderful. Yeah. So I know people will want to hear more about being able to do that. That's good. That's yeah. good. good. So you can use the hypnosis when you get, when you are at the um, trainer and and institute head level, then you can also train those individual hypnotic techniques with other people. So it's more than just those two or three individual group practices that I use. That's great. That's great. You have you have a lot of. A lot of to offer people. You have an awful lot of offer. I I see that you are now, as you said at the beginning of our conversation, you didn't feel like you felt like you were on the sidelines of life. Um, I feel like you definitely now are are working in your authentic self. Right. Oh, definitely. I feel that now I can let people know my experience and how I felt and how these different neuro-linguistic programming techniques and hypnosis have helped me in my healing journey. And I just want to serve as many people as possible because I think hypnosis, for example, is a very powerful yet gentle tool and neuro-linguistic programming. You can start from the inside and out Not to say that cognitive therapy or dialectical behavioral therapy aren't warranted. This is that they start from the outside in. And this really gets down to the core right away and just starts peeling off that onion so that you can really begin that healing and transformational journey. I have seen this happening. So I've, I, I think you're wonderful. I think you're absolutely wonderful. Tell me what I like to, I like to collect what I call glimmers or um, where you really feel that joy inside. What of what you do for people, you know, (laughs) what in your business brings you that joy? If I just said it offline, we haven't, we haven't uh, tested on this, but, uh, but what brings you joy? Well, my passion and joy is really helping as many people as possible. I don't want people to sit on the sidelines of their life. Um, I want them to really be authentic. I want them to really know who they are and how they can best serve the people around them. So I really get up every morning looking at ways that I can best serve my clients because I feel that I have to be at my best in order to serve others. And I really feel very passionate about taking that person by the hand and just guiding them to who they're meant to be. And we can use different techniques and approaches, whatever works best for the client, give them some tasking to do so that they can reinforce the new neurology that we're putting in place. So it's just so incredibly freeing. If you, um, I have, see it on your face. It's I like know, when you it's, see the trans comedy and encompass that transformation. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it's like, you've just done it again. It's just like another person. That's wonderful. That's fabulous. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, um, I'm, I want a lot of people to see this video and learn about you and, and you are able to work anywhere in the, all those countries. Yes. What is the best way for someone to reach out to you? If they've watched this video, what is the very best way to reach out to you? The very best way is really my um, Gmail address. It's M. Petrucci, P-E-T-R-U-C-C-I, 2002 at gmail.com. And I would just like to 
have people feel really comfortable contacting me and we'll just talk and just see how, where they're at and um, what their needs are and how I can best serve them. Well, thank you so much. And I'll definitely put that and other contact information like your website under the video. So watch for that. Thank you again. This is fabulous. And if you're interested in learning more, join Living Well Connections this week and you'll be able to interact more with Mary Elaine. And also we're going to have a Q&A period at the end of the week. So start thinking of your questions now. Take care and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Thank you, Robin.